Sorry, everybody. Technical difficulties here. Sorry. Aviv suggests. How about this? Can, I, I just disabled the camera. Is that helping? A little bit. We can hear you a little better now. Aviv, you want me to log off a of swan? Okay, let me see if I can do that. Now I can hear you just fine. All right. Well, I've logged off a of swan. So do we want to try video again or not? We can try it and we have a solution if it doesn't work. Okay. Well, I mean, we want to see your pretty face. <laughs> you did get a haircut just for this. Sorry, everybody. The explanation of the three spade bid and the four spade bid. We that's what we were talking about when we kind of lost everything. Um, so you were saying something about the vulnerability. Can you guys hear me or not? It's pretty choppy. Adam, you can hear me? It's pretty choppy. Yeah, I think kill your video. Okay. It's that New Jersey Wi Fi. Hmm. It's just not up to snuff. I don't know what else that works. Yeah. Um, can you hear me better now? Yeah, it's much better now. All right. Well, they can't hear you either. So be no. It's not going to be either. Yeah. Well. Okay. So this can everyone one two three. Yeah. Can, can everyone hear me? Hear me, yes. me and Steve now. Um. Hmm. We're not getting a lot of yeses. We're not getting a lot of yeses here. Can Aviv says he can hear. Audrey can hear. All right. I think I think we're okay. Um, so okay. So we're talking about the thought process behind accepting this invitation with only a six six count. Right. And and having a fifth trump is, is very big. It makes the hand play a lot easier. And your mm -hmm. singleton is in the heart. It's not the suit I open. So that's got some value, or we assume it does. And in this position, you know, I, I see a bunch of people did bid four spades. But the reason I don't mind three spades, and this is what I was saying earlier, is partner can respond really late when you open first seat favorable. So when that happens, you want to give them a little bit more room and it means they should be a little bit more aggressive to bid game. So I would think four spades would be an overbid here. I mean, you're very prime, but when you bid three spades, partner expects the balanced 18 count, right? It's often an off shape, you know, yeah. it's, it, 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 like this, this is a really, like if I was vulnerable and you bid a spade, I would bid four spades, I'm sure. Okay. Or if I was in second seat where you maybe not respond so light. But uh, I think that at favorable in particular, it's easy to bid three spades. Otherwise, it's a really primed out hand. Yeah. Okay. Very good. And then I chose to kind of reverse the dummy on this hand uh, and rough a couple hearts since the, the trumps in the, in the dummy were so much better. Um, what do you think of that? that line in that thought process. So they, you know, they let a heart and I roughed a heart. Yeah, I like it. I, I don't think it is so much as reversing the dummy because assuming spades aren't 4-0, it, it doesn't really matter whether you reverse the dummy or not. But I, I like it because it may make them break a diamond or a club, which you like. Right, exactly. That's what I was hoping for. Yeah, so I, I like your... I like your approach on this hand. Right. I mean, there's certainly an argument that after roughing at trick two, I should like play ace of clubs and rough the other heart before I put them in with a trump. Right now they have to break a minor. Yeah, but you might be setting somebody up for a club rough. Yeah. Club. Yeah. That's what I was worried about. 
So I think the partial elimination is, is the best strategy. So so the way I played it was best. You you played it best, Adam. Oh. When to draw Trump. So you might have heard of that book. All right. Number three um, was, I thought, an interesting defensive hand for us. Uh, so a spade, you opened, or you overcalled two hearts. We ended up defending three diamonds. And so... You lead a heart, and you know, of course, I discourage here. So you know, I have one or three spade or one or three hearts, right? Right. So it doesn't seem right to cash the heart. So you switched to clubs. Well, I think it's it's more that it's not it's not that it's not right. I I don't have to do it right now because I have the Ace of Diamonds, so I don't have to commit to playing you for a singleton heart now, I get to, to see what you signal on the eight of clubs and that'll help me indicate what to do later. Good point. So eight of clubs, king, and I made kind of a strong signal for clubs. And declare played trumps and they roughed this trump and now played a diamond to your 10. So still you don't have to commit in hearts. I right? still don't have to commit. Also, your 10 of clubs told me that you, you like clubs. Right. So, right. so it, it seems was possible right to, to separate all our diamond tricks too. You might have had these clubs for all I know. Right, right, um, right. So now we're gonna get all of our tricks and now you know, it's late enough, like you can do this and it doesn't matter. Like setting up the queen of hearts doesn't matter at that point because I'm right. over roughing and we've set the club up. Right. So, you know, we waited until we had the club set up before we got that queen of hearts set up for declarer in the dummy. So I thought you defended that very well, Steve. Well done. Thanks, Adam. Does anybody have any questions? Or uh, I can't even tell who's here. Yeah. Anybody here? No, we've got a we've got a nice little cadre of people here. But please do ask questions. Like we'll just talk. We'll talk and talk and talk. But um, you know, if you have questions about what we're talking about, about any other hands that we played, you know, that's what we want to know. Um, so on this one board number four i made a penalty double and you pulled it but i did I think, I think i understand with your six five well i i knew that just the one penalty double pulling wouldn't upset you that much so i had to wait to do another one later mm -hmm. yeah yeah i think i think you have it yeah. uh so when south doubles you know i figured they had the king doubleton or king third of clubs and um three spades like i it looks like a cross rough i just wasn't sure exactly the best way to time it uh, and i'm not sure i did it right um what's what's your just like initial thought looking at the hand as they leave a spade how to time I, I, think, I think that the one thing i would think is it is very like you know south made an aggressive four spade bid and only has three spades so right. I think it's very, my initial thought is that that North is five, six in the majors. Mm -hmm. Because why did South pick four spades over like given a choice or anything like that? So right. I would start out by thinking that. And I certainly think South has the king of clubs. Right. Right. Which means like if you're going to rough hearts, they're going to gonna get over roughed. And the fourth round of spades is going to get over roughed. And so just basically plan to give them the king of clubs. Yeah, I think at some point you're going to have to give them the king of clubs. I mean, you got to a really interesting end position where you think wanted to rough. I thought yeah. you were an interesting end position where they could have held you to five. Yeah, they could have. Uh, I think they could have also done something different. It could, it could be a little complicated. Yeah, yeah. It's an interesting hand for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. All right. Let's see. What else did I have? 
number uh, number five. So I opened a diamond and I bid two spades showing. Oh, on the previous one. Whoops, I was on the last one. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Right. Two you, spades. We haven't discussed this. Two spades showing diamonds is kind of expert standard for yeah. lower for lower, higher for higher. So two hearts show clubs. Two spades with diamonds. Now I have both. Right. It's more convenient to show diamonds first and then clubs later. It's sort of like a reverse test situation. So to get both of my and I wanted to show diamonds first. Yeah. Yeah, that absolutely makes like when you bid five clubs, I knew you were really minor suit oriented like this. And you know, I could have chosen diamonds. If I right. thought so you were four triple three, you'd be like, oh, okay, the nine card diamonds instead of the eight card club suit. If you had four spades, whatever. Right. Three, four, three, three, something like that. Yeah. That was all. Now you can go up. Okay. Um Diamond to Heart. What's your philosophy when partners a past hand with a hand like mine when it comes to do you pass? Do you bid a no trump? Do you bid a spade? How do you think about that? Well, I definitely won't bid a spade. I don't like to bid a spade unless I'm unbalanced. Right. So I think, I mean, pass is usually a, a lighter hand. I definitely right. understand pass and I understand one no and I understand two hearts. Right. I think it's pretty close. I mean, the fact that I'm probably going to open most 11s for seat or second seat favorable. If I was red, I, I wouldn't pass one heart with your hand. Because you're probably just too worried about missing a game. I'd be too worried about missing a game. Yeah. So I think that your hand would be a little bit too good. At this vulnerability, I think passing is certainly reasonable. And then when you bid two hearts, I'm expecting you to have five of them, right? Because I'm going to have three. I, I think it's, it's, yeah, it shows five, I think, yeah, for sure. Right. Um, and so my double is just a high card maximum, right? I mean, I thought I thought it was more than that because you had a hand that passed to heart, and I think you're strongly suggesting penalties here. Yeah, so yeah. I wouldn't quite I mean, I, like, it's like the hand I have. Yeah, maybe better spades, but... Right. Certainly, the, you're close to... Your your hand is very reasonable for the bid, but I don't think it's a high card maximum. Okay. I think you have trump tricks usually okay. and a good hand. Okay, and then your three diamonds is just giving me a choice of strain, right? Right. right. I could have been five five here. I'm at least five four for sure. Right. Right. And so, how should I be thinking about that decision of choosing between what I figure are two eight card fits? Well, I think if it was imps, you you would definitely choose diamonds because the four four fit plays better, and it might even be a five four fit in right. match points with that good of a hand. I might be nervous that I'm scoring um, fewer points in diamonds than I would be in hearts. Since, I was you know, certainly I five of them. nervous about that, but I, my my thinking was you were going to be like probably a singleton spade, and so I figured I would rather be roughing in diamonds rather than having to rough spades in the long hand in hearts. It, I mean, I think your safest plus score is, is passing three diamonds. Right. I think if you're going for maximum points, you'd want to play in hearts. What happened at the other tables here? Um, yeah, we have 110s, 130s, 140s, 170s. It's everyone's in either hearts or diamonds and, um, you know, it, yeah. it comes to how it's how it's defended, how it's played. Right. So would you bid would you bid hearts with my hand at match points? I probably would, yeah. 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 Yeah, I don't disagree with you. Um doo -doo 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 -doo. what did I have? Set up hearts. What does that mean? Oh, we got our heart trick set up. Um, oh, right. Right. So let's see. Yeah. So I, I, had, an, I had a lead problem. Um, right? I'm on lead against three spades. 
And I figured I was choosing between a spade and a heart. And I decided to try the Ace of Spades and take a look at Dummy. Does How does that logic feel to you? I think that's pretty reasonable. I mean, it's a little nerve wracking if, if you're crashing our spade tricks, but everything, there's danger in everything, so. Right. And then, mm -hmm. you know, coming down and seeing this Dummy, my thought was if we have heart tricks, I need to get them set up before my aces get knocked out so i switched to hearts a trick too right seems right seems pretty logical um and then hold up in diamonds yeah easy peasy but when that when that suit comes down in dummy it's just danger time um yeah all right let's see uh um, yeah you did you did well to guess to duck the first the queen of diamonds when declara played it yeah, I mean, I figured he was going to have to give it to me somehow anyway. Like, if he has two entries and clubs behind my ace, I'm going to get my my diamond eventually anyway. Right. So number eight, a diamond, a heart, three diamonds. Um, yeah, I mean, only 14 points, but, like, the hand is so good. Um, yeah. Yeah. And then you just like instantly gave up on the finesse, right? Well, it's not so much that I gave up on the finesse. It, it, it was more a matter of it has to be the finesse has to work. They have to not be able to get a spade rough. So if I get to draw trumps, either the ace or king of spades rates to be on side. So I get to take six diamonds, two clubs, and a spade. And for a spade to be right, I would need them to be three, three. And for the king of diamonds to be on side, which is anti percentage. That's a lot. So that, that's asking for too much. Yeah. So Steve just played diamonds and took his tricks. Oh, I like that. Um, so we had a conversation about number nine at the table um, about what I should do over two spades. Uh, a diamond, a spade, two spades. How good is the West Hand? Should it be forcing the game? Should it be inviting? If it's going to invite, what should it bid? Um, you can share some of your thoughts with folks, Steve. Yeah, I, I think it's, again, it's like it depends on your opening bid style, but I certainly think when your partner opens a vulnerable against not, just getting the game isn't crazy. But if I were to make a game try, I think that I don't know what Adam teaches, but two no over two spades should be asking about your partner's hand. And at least this way, partner will raise to three no if let's say they have a good hand with a doubleton club. Or you'll know if partner has a maximum of four spades or a minimum of four spades. So I think if you find out partner has a minimum of four spades, I just think you're going really against the field by night in game. So even though it's not such a great game, and you know, like these clubs are on here, here it turns out the king queen and diamonds were on. I just think when you have a, a hand that you would have opened the bidding, and your partner opens the bidding in a spot that you would expect them to have a real opening bid, you should tend to get it to game. So opening hand opposite opening opening hand is game, Mister Gorin. I would look at it. Yeah. Okay. I, I just think it's interesting that the the vulnerability of the opening bidder makes such a difference for you. Uh, it, it really does, because I, I'm just not opening them. Like, I, I just think white against red, I'm going to be so aggressive to open 11 counts. But red against white, I'm, I'm not. Yeah. So I, I could see inviting opposite of white. If I was playing as my own partner, I would think, hmm, all right, opposite, part, opposite Steve's white opening bid, I'll, I'll bid two no and invite. And let them out, but opposite is red. I went. Fair enough. Um, oh, this this was our. Yeah, this our, was a fun hand. This was our disaster, huh? Um, <clears throat> so this is one of these things that it's good to talk about um, as a partnership. And Steve and I do not play often, but what sort of new minor forcing applies by a past hand. Um, we play two-way new minor forcing normally, 
we hadn't discussed whether that stays on or not. Um, I thought it did, and Steve thought it didn't, and whoopsie daisies. Um, and I'm honestly not sure what standard. Um, so yeah, I, I didn't know what was standard. I thought, you know, Adam has worked with Bobby and I on our notes, so I'm like. Well, in a pinch, maybe Adam remembers how Bobby and I played two diamonds. And I was very nervous, like, that if I bid two clubs in the past, I couldn't recover. And I felt like if I bid two diamonds, as long as Adam doesn't go jumping around like a jumping Mexican jumping bee, I'll bid three diamonds next time, and at least I'll understand what happened. But right. Adam was like, no, 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 I'm going to bid three spades. So I'm like, all right, well, I'll bid four diamonds. And uh, Adam's like, yeah, okay, I'll go back to four hearts. And then force it. So you could see having a non partnership uh, certainly create some yeah. problems. I mean, I thought I had a pretty good hand for the auction. In answer to the question of, um, that Michael's asking, I would open two arches with, with the South End. I mean, the King 10 9, you're vulnerable, but you are 6 4, and your, your hard spots are pretty, King 10 9 are good enough. So to me, that would be a routine. You would go it was better against us not to open two hearts. Right. Did you consider t two diamonds? I know you're not used to having a two diamond bid available, but. Uh... I actually didn't consider it because I wouldn't have remembered we were playing with twos. But if I did remember, I like I would do a four, three in the majors anyway. That was a no? Yeah, it was a no. I didn't consider it because I didn't remember. And right. if I did remember, I wouldn't have done it anyway. Right. Because the suit's not great, and you have the four hearts, and the like. There's a lot of, a lot of flaws. A lot of flaws. Yeah. 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 Um, this was my terrible defense. Um, I mean, I think I just wanted to go back to, you know, go back to the last hand for a second. Yeah. So, you were doubled, and we're past that. First of all, I think that is really lucky. I think that um, that East made an amazing decision, great decision to pass. I mean, they caught a doubleton diamond and ace and a heart from their partner. But I wouldn't let the result, your poor result on this board, stop you from opening two hearts next time. You know, I think that's that's a very small sample size. Yeah, 6-4, especially with some good spot cards in your suits. I'm a fan. Yeah. Yeah. All right. 11 when it goes a spade two hearts by a past hand what is the north hand supposed to do do you think steve i think i would definitely sorry i lost you you said you would definitely <laughs> i would think it's a part score deal and uh, i would just let the bidding in so you would pass two hearts I would. Oh, New Jersey Wi-Fi. You still can't hear me? A little bit. It's coming in and out. All right. Sorry. It's better now. You would pass two hearts. I would pass two hearts, yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's my choice, too. Um, because three diamonds is game forcing. Right? Right. You're, you're committing to game on a misfit hand when you have only 11 points and your partner didn't open the bidding. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I mean, if you're going to defend against us, it's good to get to game. Against me, I should say. I take this entirely upon myself. Um, yeah. Yeah. You can skip over you, the defense. Yeah, we'll skip like. over to the defense. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, yeah, so over two spades, I thought you had an interesting bidding problem here. Like, what's your what's your thinking in these situations? I mean, I think you can overbid and bid three clubs, which is game forcing basically, or you can make a negative double. The thing that made like ace king ace is nice, the ten of hearts is nice, but having three little speed really isn't great. Right. So I decided that I'm just going to treat the hand as if I have both minors and a few bid diamonds. I'm going to crack the hearts and go a little bit low with this hand because three little spades is a really Terrible holding when they bid two spades vulnerable on your right. 
Yeah, especially if they don't raise. Right. Yeah. Do you think this sequence will ever include three hearts? Never for me. I would just never... I would never bid this way with three hearts. I know there are people that would bid this way, but I, I think you just have to either bid three hearts or jump to game or Q-bid, but I don't think you should have three trumps to bid because you don't know what your partner's going to bid over the double. Right. Yeah. So no, I don't think it should contain three hearts. I agree. I was taught that this sequence showed like invitational with three, you know, back in the day. And I, I never mm. really got on board with that. Yeah, it doesn't really make sense because you know that you're going to get to make that. Bid. So because you double and south raised to three bids, well, now you're forced to bid three hearts, yeah. four hearts. And so I think you either, with an invitational three, decide to bid four or bid three, which could be a little bit heavy. But I wouldn't double. Yeah. Okay. A diamond, a heart, three diamonds, three no trump. So I, f I found myself on lead here. And let me tell you my thought process, and you can tell me if you think it makes any sense. Um, but I'm worried about the diamond suit and dummy, right? There's going to be a source of tricks there. And mm -hmm. I don't think that we're taking a lot of heart tricks with opener having, or, you know, a declare having bid hearts. And so I'm so weak, you know, I'm trying to hit my partner's suit and set their suit up. And my partner didn't overcall a spade when they had the opportunity to. So they're not going to have good spades and a decent hand. So the best shot of finding partner with something useful is going to be if they have club length and not enough to make a two-level overcall. So I led the three of clubs. I, I think your logic is impeccable. I yeah? Yes. You would make the same lead? I might have led the 10 of hearts, but I think your low club lead is really smart. I, I think the low club is the percentage lead. That makes me feel so good. Um, <laughs> yeah. I might have made the wrong lead, but I, I think you made the right lead. Yeah. The, but the, the important thing here is, you know, when your hand is this weak against three no Trump, you're really trying to set up partner suit. Right. That's the hand with the entries. And taking that negative inference that partner didn't overcall a spade, I think makes them more likely to have a five card club suit if they're going to have a five card suit. I, I completely agree with you. Awesome. Awesome. I love it when I get something right. <laughs> it doesn't happen a lot, but. Um, um, all right. The, the West hand here that I have. Some people I know would open this one no trump, and some would, you know, open a club and plan to rebid three clubs. What? How do you think about those decisions? I, I would open a club and rebid three clubs with this hand. It's like a lot of it's positional and also preemptive value and stuff. But you have you have a pretty decent defensive hand. I'm not so worried about preempting them out of like four of a major, as I am sometimes when I bid a no trump with a six card suit, and you really have a hand that you're mostly mostly would prefer was played by your partner's side. So I, I like one club planning on rebidding three clubs. It, so certainly King one no can work, but I like your King, bidding. King Doubleton of Diamonds doesn't make you want to side it. Yeah, you have the side. ten of diamonds, you know, so it's not Okay. So the auction didn't proceed as I was hoping it was going to. Um Right. So when a diamond, a heart, two diamonds. And so now I can't jump to three clubs. And I was thinking, man, I wish we were playing good, bad, three, no Trump or two, no Trump. Sorry. Is this a situation where, where you would want that agreement or would you want a natural 18 point two, no Trump here? Are you deep in thought or did we lose you again? Steve? Oh, no. 
All right, we lost Steve for the moment. Um, hopefully, he'll come back. Um, so, for those of you who don't know, uh, good, bad, to no Trump. Uh, is a form of Labensol. Um, and so the idea is there are some times when I want to bid three clubs here and have it mean I have a good hand and extra values with club. But there are other times when I would just, you know, it's like I just have a, you know, minimum hand, but I have seven clubs and I want to compete to three clubs. And so it's useful to be able to differentiate those two types of hands. And so good bad would say an immediate three clubs like I made shows the stronger hand. And you can bid two no trump to show the weaker hand, the more competitive hand. When the opponents have bid and raised here, I think that's useful. Um, that's what Greg and I play, I hope, I think. Um, yeah. All right. I'm sorry we have lost Steve's audio for the moment. Maybe he can make it back. Um, what was I asking about this one? Nope, nope, this one. So, sorry, it's loud outside my window today. Um, New York City. So Steve opened a no trump on this hand. And with four or five in the majors and nine points, I had to decide whether I was going to invite or force a game. And I'm curious, Steve, about your, your thinking, how you would make that decision. Presumably, we haven't talked about this, but I would assume it's fairly standard that if I transfer to hearts and then bid two spades, that's usually invitational. Five hearts, four or five spades. Whereas if I'm going to game force, I'll use small and I'll start with two clubs and then jump, um, jump in the shorter suit. Now, obviously here, when I bid stamen and partner bids hearts, you know, very, very easy uh, for me to bid game. I had decided I was going to game anyway with my nine um, and, you know, all my values in my suits, but my spot cards were so bad and, um, so I was on the fence, and I'm glad to hear Steve say that he thinks it's close as well. Um, yeah. Is there anything there that, like, kind of tips you one way or the other, Steve? Like, what makes you think forcing the game is the long-term winner? I mean, I'll admit that part of what went into my thinking was – I'm 100% sure we'll be on the same page about Smolin and only 90% sure about the other thing. Let's see if I can try to quiet the door, the, uh, the dogs out there down. Again, I'm very sorry about that. Um, Yeah, I mean, Aviv, there, we do open good 14s for sure. Um, so, yeah, I know that a 14-point hand with five diamonds is very much in partner's range. Um, but, you know, no good reason if partner's 3-3 three, three in the majors – so at least this way we get to the right suit. Okay. That's an interesting thought, right? If partner's minimum and I transfer to hearts and bid spades, partner might just pass and we're in the wrong strain. So at least this guarantees getting us to the right strain. Good thought. And then Steve got a spade lead. And it seems like there's a lot of options on how to play this hand. Um, so I'd love, I'd love to hear your, your thought process on how you, how you attack this, Steve, what Steve did 
was he went for club pitches. So he played Ace of Diamonds and roughed a diamond and played the Ace of Spades and threw a club. Now, unfortunately, South had a doubleton spade, and so he only got the one club pitch. Um, but, you know, say la vie. Um, you know, and then a spade came back and he had to rough high. Um, yeah, but then the diamond set up, and so even with the bad Trump split, he was in good shape. Um, but, you know, I could see starting by drawing trumps and hoping the opponents don't switch to clubs. Um, I mean, I, I, I like Steve's line a lot. I just wonder if you were considering anything else, Steve. So he said he got a favorable lead and didn't want to have the third round of diamonds over rough before he got a pitch. Yeah. Okay. So that's an interesting, you know, thing to think about is I'm kind of ahead already on this board. I, um, you know, I got a lead. They didn't, they didn't lead clubs and get those immediately. So I have a chance to, throw them away. Not saying it's the wrong lead by any means. It's a very reasonable lead, but you know, other people might get, um, get a worse lead or, you know, a lead that is not as good for declarer. Um, so when you're ahead on the board, you know, you don't have to go crazy. Um, yeah. All right. I like that. Um, 17 uh steve played this i didn't even watch it so was there anything interesting on this one steve um i know you said celia and audrey defended it well um we are in not where everyone will be in so best play to make it is a consideration okay i think what he's saying is that you know, we've made it to game and I did have a decision to make and Steve has a minimum. So not everyone's going to be um, in game. And so over tricks are not as important as just making the contract. And, you know, you can actually see that here. Um, oh, it, interestingly, everyone was in game. Um and just making was was all that was needed. Um, so having that analysis of not just you know what's our contract like, but um, what uh, what I think is going to happen at all of the other tables, and if I'm in good contract, bad contract, normal contract, abnormal contract, how that's going to affect things. Yeah, I'm curious here. Um, a lot of people opened a diamond. Oh, right, because you're two, two, four, five, two. Um, yeah, I mean, this looks very normal, I would think, to open one no trump, because if it goes like a diamond to spade, you don't have a good rebid, and you've got, you know, queens and jacks in your in your doubleton, so that's not bad. Um, yeah, I would expect a lot of one no trump openings, um, and we didn't get a lot of one no trump openings. Um, this pair reproduced our auction and so did they. Um, yeah, the problem is if you open a diamond and it goes a heart, three hearts is really an overbid. Um, right. You don't have that balanced 18 count and you don't have the shapely 15, 16 count. So, you know, I'm really thinking through my, my rebid before I open this hand. Um, I hope that's your thinking too, Steve, on the opening, opening bid here. No one needs to hear my thoughts. We're here for Steve. Um, yeah, Steve says, big proponent of opening no Trump when you're mostly balanced, especially when you have rebid problems. 
Um, yeah. And so he considers five of a minor, four of a ma of a major, and two two in the other suits balanced. Um, so even if you have four spades, Steve, and you know have a rebid, I feel like I had a hand like that earlier. Um, this hand, no, this one's pretty clear to open a diamond. Um, I thought I had one that was like that. And I had a decision, but I could be wrong. With four spades at the high end of the range, one one diamond is fine, he says. Um, I can't find the hand I was looking for. So this is an important sequence on this last board for everyone to be familiar with. That a major, a no trump, two of whatever... When responder bids a new suit, it's natural and weak and says, like, I just want to play here. I'm not interested in any of your suits. Just pass unless you have a big hand. Um, yeah. Which, of course, Steve did. And, you know, we, we ended up in fine shape. Um, but... So many times I see people either bid two diamonds with the wrong kind of hand, you know, with like a 10 count or something, or I see people as the opener bid again over two diamonds when they shouldn't. So, all right. Those are the hands that I found interesting. I'm going to give everyone one last chance to uh, ask questions, right? You got Steve Weinstein here. I mean, he's only here in text at the moment, but um, he's still here. So if anything came up today, if you have a general question, this is your shot. Yeah, well, it happened, Steve. We appreciate you being here and um, yeah, big thanks to all of you for playing in the game, um, for coming here and listening to me and Steve talk about bridge. Please uh, check out Swan the rest of the week. Audrey Grant will be here on Thursday. I'll be doing the games tomorrow. Um, so really encourage you to come check those out, tell your friends. Uh, we're trying to build our platform up. So thank you all very much, and uh, hopefully we'll see you later in the week. Do, 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 do.